In news that will no doubt prove alarming to hipsters, DJs, Harry Styles, and Kate Middleton, it has been reported in a scholarly medical journal that an Australian woman wearing skinny jeans collapsed and had to spend four days in hospital after her too tight pants cut off the blood supply in her legs. Hello, my beautiful loves. Welcome back. So I might be a little late to this conversation, but in my defense, I'm fashionably late. <laughs> if you don't have a TikTok, you might not know what this is about, but earlier this year, and technically I guess the feud started last year because I first started seeing TikToks about this stuff last year, but um, earlier this year, there was a resurgence of a feud between millennials and Gen Z. I'm gonna say older millennials and younger Gen Z because I honestly don't know any 90s babies who are up in arms about this, but maybe they exist, I don't know. I can't say that for sure. If you're lost on what the difference is between millennials and Gen Z, you're not alone. Um, millennials, I think, spans the birth year 1981 to 1995-ish. Gen Z is like roughly any year after until 2010. And who knows where I fall under this as a 96er, but I'm trying not to make the year I was born, a major facet of my personality um, because time is a social construct. Future. I feel like the whole generational war on TikTok started with some pretty funny jokes about how millennials like latte art and BuzzFeed quizzes and they say doggo and love Harry Potter. Okay, so I'm editing right now and I think I need to rephrase this part because when I was editing, I was like, Oh, I'm actually making it seem like Gen Z started the whole generational war on TikTok when um, the entirety of last year I was seeing videos made by both millennials and Gen Z taking jabs at each other. So I don't actually know who started it, but I think the resurgence of the feud earlier this year and specifically the stuff about um, middle parts and skinny jeans were mostly instigated by Gen Z. And that's kind of what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Oh, hey, Cheryl. Nothing much, just making dinner for the hubby. Guess what came on the radio today? I want it that way. I always thought these were kind of funny just because it's kind of true, but I know some millennials were getting pretty annoyed even early on and then enter 2021 and now Gen Z are making TikToks Gen Z, Gen Z, -er, Gen Zoomers? Zoomers are making TikToks shitting on skinny jeans. Which has opened a whole nother Pandora's box. I be doing wish. A lot of these videos aren't even calling out millennials directly, but a lot of millennials are feeling attacked because I guess, um, they feel like teenagers are trying to dictate what trends are in and because I guess a lot of them are still wearing skinny jeans. They feel like this is just adding to the general warfare, which is why we get videos like these. Hey Gen Z, you can suck it. You can't tell me what to wear. Cause I've been rocking this side part since you had Kermit on your underwear. So cute. I do want to point out that this is a small minority of angry millennials and half of them I hope are just joking as well. But if not, the majority of the people getting involved are also white Americans. Has any other people of color noticed that the Gen Z millennial war is only happening between the white people? Like, when have we said adulting? Or doggo? Who the frick says doggo? And I'm a millennial. But if you're confused about what the animosity is even about, the situation is in the mid to late 2000s, the skinny jeans were all the rage. And while I have to say, I don't think any of my older friends are still wearing skinny jeans, there's clearly a subgroup of millennials who are clinging onto that silhouette very aggressively. Well, here's the thing, Gen Z. Millennials shouldn't be trying to dress like 14, 15, 16 year olds. And I hope that when you are 28, 29, 30, you're not trying to dress like 14, 16, 15, 16 year olds. So when you see a millennial not wearing a side, not wearing a middle part and not wearing the jeans that you want them to be, maybe you just shut up because they shouldn't be. You should be actually worrying about people. You know what? No, you just keep your opinions to yourself because you're literally six years old. That's my opinion. On the other side of the issue, we have Gen Z who are wearing anything but skinny jeans. And then of course, there are people in the middle who are making fun of the entire situation. <laughs> hey, do you want to come over for game night? Yeah, definitely. Will it be safe to wear? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just the two of us. Hey, I got the game. 
times. Oh my god, I forgot to tell you, my Gen Z cousin is here. Oh! Hey! Oh. Hey. Are those... No! Skinny jeans? Wait! Cancel! Now this conflict honestly baffles me because millennials were actually rocking middle parts and baggy jeans for a good portion of the 90s. And you would think that millennials who are arguably one of the most nostalgic generations to exist, having experienced a crazy amount of change throughout their childhoods, what with the introduction of new technology like smartphones and laptops and social media, and who coined the phrase only 90s kids would remember, would have a stronger appreciation for the styles of their youth. I was too young to really see the appeal of the middle part and baggy jeans, but honestly, whenever I do see kids recreating the scene look on TikTok, yeah. it fills me with warmth. And anytime there was an 80s themed party that I had to go to like during school or whatever, my mom was always super stoked about it. But actually now that I think about it, I feel like a lot of people are just afraid of getting older. So seeing children recreating the styles of their youth might make them feel older and they get upset about it. Or it could be good old generational gatekeeping as in if you're going to wear baggy jeans, you have to wear it in the same exact way I wore it in the 90s which is ridiculous logic. But it's the same logic exhibited by people who get mad at kids for discovering Fleetwood Mac through TikTok instead of through their parents' cassette tapes. But anyway, let's talk about the jeans. I may be biased, but I'm personally against skinny jeans for myself, especially the ultra skinny jeans. I actually don't mind the distressed black ones because of my love for Panic at the Disco, but um, anything other than that, like any other colorway, and it's a no for me dog. Not only do I think they look kind of unflattering on me personally, but I just remember how every day I would wear these pants like almost every day in middle school and high school. And every morning at 6 a.m., I would have to dedicate like a 10 minute time slot just to shimmy into these skinny jeans. Like, why would I want to repeat that experience? And then I got really bad in the springtime because your leg skin, and yes, I know that sounds really gross, but I don't know what else to call it. Your leg skin? Would literally suffocate. And I'm from a very humid area, so on top of that, my legs would just be super hot and sweaty, but there was nothing I could do about it because they were entrapped in these denim death contraptions. <laughs> so I don't know if I'll ever go back to skinny jeans, personally. That's my and not to sound too Team Gen Z on this because I don't think it's that serious to pick sides, but trends change. This is just a fact of life and the tea is that skinny jeans will probably come back in the next five years or so. Check back on this video in five years. There's this concept called the 20 year rule, which basically says that fashion trends will come back roughly every 20 years. And we can see that most recently with the uh, Y2K revival in the late 2010s. And I guess technically it's still ongoing. Likewise, skinny jeans were not invented in the 2000s, they were just upgraded for the times. Before the 2000s, there was a skinny jeans movement in the 70s and 80s where punks and other alternative subcultures embraced the trend. And before that, we saw skinny pants in the 50s and 60s. See a pattern? 20 year rule. Of course, every decade has its own tastes. So in the 60s, skinny pants followed the mod or beatnik trend. They were usually high-waisted and the focus was also less on jeans and more on like actual trousers. If you look up photos of Audrey Hepburn or Elvis Presley, you can see them rocking some relatively tight pants compared to previous decades. In the 80s, because tight jeans were first embraced by the punks, they're usually distressed, um, embellished with safety pins or zippers. I found this article from September 2006 written by Leah Rumack for Toronto's National Post, and in it she writes, I'm no fool. I'm well aware of the largest criticism of skinny pants, best summed up perhaps by the panhandler who thoughtfully screamed at me on the street the other day. You look tacky and 80s. <laughs> this is why I think it's so funny to see comments like this on TikTok. Living like Terry says, it's funny Gen Z is just imitating the 70s style and acting like it's new and in. Y'all are 50 years late on that. Like if you're wearing skinny jeans today, I could also say that you're 50 years late on that, but 
Anyways, moving on, the mid to late 2000s wasn't a direct copy of the 80s because as I said before, every decade or every time period has its own interpretation of the style. 2000s skinny jeans were the skinniest they could ever be and paved the way for the diabolical jeggings. <laughs> Emo kids embraced skinny jeans in the mostly black colorway and they were usually also low rise and they would wear them with tight band t-shirts and studded belts. Scene kids wore them with hoodies and wore them in all kinds of different neon colorways and Yes, scene kids and emo kids were different groups. And no, I will not be explaining that further for this video. And for the masses, if you didn't wear a long Delia's tunic with skinny jeans and ballet flats. Cancel. Why did so many people like skinny jeans in the first place? Well, aside from the whole brainwashing trend factor, which basically is like, you know, if you see so much of something, you suddenly want it. Um, Hannah Hong writes this in her article, why I'm never letting go of skinny jeans, no matter what Gen Z says. Even if skinny jeans were still too long for me, nobody would be the wiser because I could scrunch them up at the ankles or fold them a couple notches. Earlier in the article, she talks about how she's short, so it was hard for her to find a pair of jeans that fit her. So that's just for context. The tight fit presented me with ease of movement and miraculously added two sorely needed inches of leg. Not long after that, I discovered boots, wedges. I could wear them because I could see them. Whereas baggier jeans and boot cuts would just hide my shoes, I could now wear any kind of shoe my sartorial heart desired, including my favorite toe pumps and knee highs. For the first time, my skinny jeans made me enjoy wearing pants. But not everyone at the time was a proponent of skinny jeans. In November 2006, Redbook Magazine asked for people's opinions on the new trend, and there were some Gen Xers who didn't want to make the change. Kieran Fuller, 36 at the time from Indiana, said, The greatest things that ever happen to jeans are stretch and boot cut. Why mess up a good thing? Hello everyone, so I am back. Editing Mina is back because there was an audio glitch. And yes, I'm wearing a different outfit because this is a multi-day editing project for me. Um, but yeah, so what I was supposed to say is that this video would not be complete without recognizing Eddie Slamon and where he plays into this. Obviously, my camera did not want Eddie Slamon to be recognized, but alas, I'm here to recognize him. And if you're unfamiliar with who Eddie Slamon is, he is the current creative director at Celine, but from 2000 to 2007, he was the creative director at Dior Ohm. And his work at Dior is largely credited for being the origin of the whole skinny tie, skinny jean, skinny suit movement of the 2000s. But clothing aside, this was a huge moment in fashion in terms of introducing a new industry standard for male models. In February 2008, the New York Times published an article titled The Vanishing Point. The article mentions that in 1994, the sample size was an Italian 50, an appropriate size for a six-foot male. But around the time Slimane went on to do your own, the typical sample size had gone down to 48, and then in 2008, it became 46. For people in the US, that's going from a size L to a size S. Casting director James Scully said, once the Eddie Slimonization, I'm gonna start using that from now on, got started, all anyone wanted to cast was the scrawny kid who looked like he got sand kicked in his face. Um, I say all this, but I don't want to imply that Eddie Slimon was trying to push any kind of industry-wide agenda because as far as I know, it didn't seem like he was. Yahoo Style did an interview with him in 2015, and the interviewer asked him the question, what do you say to people who say that you are too obsessed with a certain skinny ideal of youth? Eddie replies, I was precisely just like any of these guys I photograph or that walk my shows. Jackets were always a little too big for me. Many in high school or in my family were attempting to make me feel I was half a man because I was lean and not an athletic build. I would turn to my music heroes and this was comforting. They looked the same and I wanted to do everything to be like them and not hide myself in baggy clothes to avoid negative comments. David Bowie, Keith Richards, Mick Jagger, Mick Jones, Paul Weller, I felt connected to their allure, aesthetic, and style. Given this context, it's no surprise that a lot of people were against skinny jeans at the time because they felt like skinny jeans were only meant for skinny people. In 2006, Sydney Stoyan lamented about it in her article for the Toronto National Post titled, Unless You're Rake Thin, Forget This Trend. 
Christina Ziegler, 43, from California, said to Red Book Magazine, the term skinny just sets up those of us who are not a perfect shape for disappointment. But skinny jeans are not complete evildoers, and they can be more size inclusive than what the name suggests. I came across a Refinery29 article written recently by Marie Southard Espina, who talks about how skinny jeans were liberating for her as a plus size woman. She writes, To Zoomers, skinny jeans may not be as cool as mom denim or 70s style flares, but to many of us, they will forever remain precious as a tool through which we embraced our figures like never before. So I think it's up to the person what is considered comfortable. But again, personally, during the pandemic, I would much rather lounge around in baggy jeans over skinny jeans. That's my opinion! There's also this idea of the trickle-down influence in fashion. There's also trickle-across and trickle-up, but trickle-down basically states that uh, fashion trends start up in high fashion and then they trickle down to the masses. The Cerulean quickly showed up in the collections of eight different designers. And then it uh, filtered down through the department stores and then trickled on down into some tragic casual corner where you no doubt fished it out of some clearance bin. But of course, designers don't just pull things out of thin air. Um, Eddie himself talked about how he pulled influence from 70s and 80s rock stars, and he wasn't the only one doing that at the time either. In 2003, Sarah Meikle, senior fashion editor of Teen Vogue, said that they were trying to push a chic 80s punk look among the tween teen demographic. 80s fashion in general was experiencing a resurgence in fashion, um, neon colors, animal prints, and acid wash being a couple examples. So you can argue that it was only a matter of time before 80s drain pipe pants were coming back into style in the 2000s. The thing about this jeans debate that I find really funny is this kind of stuff just always happens. Newer generations will always make fun of older generations. Older generations will always be salty about it because we as a society still haven't come to terms with the idea of aging. How do you do, fellow kids? What? And we don't want to be reminded that we're getting older and no longer up to date with what's cool. Millennials literally did this exact same thing with Gen X with jeans. I actually mentioned this in my WandaVision video, but the term mom jeans was actually meant to be derogatory. Mom jeans fit mom just the way she likes it. She'll love the nine inch zipper and casual front pleats. Cut generously to fit a mom's body. Because at the time of the term's coinage in the early 2000s, the fashionable jean silhouette was low rise and slim fitting. So the high-waisted, loose-fitting jeans of the 80s and early 90s were now considered frumpy and old and out of style, a style that only moms were clinging on to. Even though I personally don't like skinny jeans, I don't have any problem with anyone wearing skinny jeans. I think it's cool when people don't follow trends. It's way more sustainable not to throw out your old clothes every single season. And trends are honestly just a capitalist ploy to get people to spend more money, so... And in a couple of years, skinny jeans will be considered vintage, which is a scary thought, but there are already TikToks being made romanticizing going to high school in the early 2010s. So it's just inevitable and um, you should rock them if you love them or hold on to them for longer because you might be able to sell them in the future at a higher price than what you got them for. And if we want to move further into unfunny territory, ageism is a really serious issue. And it affects everyone at some point in your life. Gen Z will be uprooted by another Gen Z in due time. I think the next generation is called Generation Alpha. And I think this is pretty difficult for younger people to understand because you're so young. And I feel like when you're a teenager, all you want to do is grow up and get older. But I'm in my 20s and I'm gonna be 25 this year. And I know that being in my 20s is not being old because if you think you're old in your 20s, you're just going to think you're old for your entire life because you're only going to get older. But now I'm in my 20s and I definitely feel this underlying threat of aging that I didn't feel before my 20s. There's a popular rhetoric among college-aged adults about wanting to make something of yourself before you're in your 30s. Um, even though time is meaningless and Queen Toni Morrison herself, rest in peace, um, didn't publish her first book till she was 39. But it's hard to come to terms with, I understand. This year is the last chance I'll ever have to date Leo DiCaprio. That's kind of a bummer. It's also worse for women and people affected by misogyny because 
Our youth is so equated to our worth as humans. Like even the term mom jeans is rooted in ageist misogyny. Give her something that says, I'm not a woman anymore. I'm a mom. <laughs> Once you're a mom or reach the age of most moms, then you're deemed uncool and undesirable. And a lot of millennials are young moms currently making the misogynistic cultural transition of young and hip to old and frumpy. So I understand the frustration towards society for not giving you a break. But I don't want to coddle millennial women about getting older too much because I also think it's just really weird to cyber bully teenagers. If children are writing mean comments to you, I don't know what to say. Um, you're an adult, go get a drink. A lot of the time, teenagers who cyber bully online are just repressed about being stuck at home without a car. And I mean, high school sucked. Let's have a little compassion. <laughs> But you know what? It's the internet and I don't have that high of an expectation for people to behave well on the internet. But I think something important is just recognizing the systems in place and understanding why we act this way towards aging and generational warfare. And as for jeans, wear what you want to wear. It's such a personal preference. Um, I just want my butt to look good, so I wear the jeans that make my butt look good. We literally have mountains of clothing in the landfill and more and more goes into it every year, so please don't throw out your clothing just because you feel peer pressure too. This is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think about this situation. And if you like what I do, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I love fashion history, but I also love doing videos like this on like more current topics. So let me know what you want to see in the future and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.